Hi, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I haven't been doing too much lately, um, various reasons for that, which I won't go into, but um, everything is going well here. And uh, I thought I'd share, because I haven't done much for a little while, I thought I'd share today um, a little, um, a couple of book reviews, two for the price of one, actually. And I'll just show you what the books are, and then we'll have a quick look at them. Are these two books here, Secret Visions. Hang on, Secret Visions. How, how can I bring this one up? <laughs> Secret Visions. Um, that one there, that is by Stephen Doughton. Bring that over there. Beautiful shots on the front there. And this one is all about loons. Um, if you remember the movie On Golden Pond, uh, there was some beautiful shots and recordings of loons out on the lake where they, on the Golden Bond. And I've always remembered that. So when I saw this book in a secondhand shop, I thought I've got to get that book. It's all about loons. And that's by um, Aubrey Lang and Wayne Lynch, who are a husband and wife team. So <clears throat> these are, when you're in Australia, you tend to um, find photography books by Australians, but I have a very good secondhand bookshop not far from where I live. And I've got a wonderful collection of books over the years from there, lots of photography books and, and other books. And uh, so there is a couple that I picked up a little while ago. So what one will we start with? Maybe we'll start with um, uh, Stephen Doughton first. Now, I've got some links that I've looked at that I'll put underneath the video on this afterwards. And uh, I'll actually sh share some of the stuff that's on Wikipedia about Stephen Doughton. He was actually one of the pioneers in, in, in high speed, high sync flash photography, getting close ups of um, uh, insects and birds. And he's a wildlife photographer. This one's called Secret Visions. I think it's called something else in a minute on, on the actual uh, list of his books, because uh, this was published in 1988. Anyway, let me just read you a little bit about um, Stephen Doughton. Let's find that on here. Stephen Doughton was born in 1973 and is an English wildlife photographer and author. He's known for his pioneering work from the early 1970s onward in high-speed nature photography. He was the first person to ever record pin-sharp Im images of insects in flight. His work covers a wide variety of animals from amphibians and birds to mammals and invertebrates. And uh, he was born in Surrey in 1937. And uh, he ended up doing a full-time course. I'll put the link to all this on, on, on that you can read afterwards. But uh, he, in, in uh, 2015, the Society of German Wildlife Photographers awarded Doughton the Fritz Steiniger Prize. The citation notes that the results of, he, of his experiments in high-speed flash photography and his subsequent publications were landmark events in the world of photography and caused a great stir worldwide. And that his work of that his work of fascinating intensity and striking beauty has set visual and artistic standards that are still valid today. And uh, one of Doughton's insect images was chosen to be carried on NASA's Voyager spacecraft as part of a series of records designed to convey something of the science and culture of mankind to possible extraterrestrial beings. Well, there you go. You know you're going somewhere when you've got your photos being sent out to extraterrestrial beings. I'll just show you a few shots from uh, Stephen's book here. Beautiful photography. He's got a very good introduction telling about his progression in, um, in, in photography. Um, as he goes, the, the book is, is worth almost worth it for the introduction alone. See if I can find some shots here. Here's a nice close up of an insect there. I'm going to read from the back of the book about the photography gear that he used to do all this stuff. Um, there's a breaking the high speed barrier from 1970 to 1995. Uh, there's a uh, shot of an owl uh, going into a tower. I've got a really good book by a local Australian photographer called Nicholas Burks, who, who really did a lot of this sort of high speed flash nature photography with birds and things like that. And uh, a new world of insect flight. There's a an insect taking off. So he's capturing all these stuff, 1972 to 1977. And um, look at this one of a, a snake bearing his fangs. Fascinating shot. And um, 
what else have we got here? Fresh challenges. Look at this one here of a praying mantis hanging upside down. It's pretty amazing. So that's a little bit of the idea of the sort of stuff that he's done. Um, Close-ups. He did a thing on honeybees at one stage, I think. Um, there we go. Close-up of a bee. So <clears throat> read all about him. If you can get hold of this book, be worth your while to get it. Some beautiful shots in here. Another one there. Whoops. I just read from the back of this because I find it fascinating in this day and age of digital photography, bearing in mind this book was written in 1988. Um, notes on the photography, cameras, he says. The camera model has little to do with results. Nowadays, there seems a technological obsession with photographic equipment brought about for the most part by, for the, most part by the camera makers who find it unnecessary to incorporate more and more complex gadgetry to sell their wares. Encouraged by much of the photographic press who discuss and compare at great length all these multi programs, auto this and digital that, it is no wonder that many photographers find it next to impossible to select suitable equipment. I have tried these state of the art cameras, bearing in mind that he's talking about in the, the pre digital capture age, he's talking about film, which had a little bit of digital screens on the top of the camera and things like that. Um, I've tried these state of the art cameras with their half dozen metering modes, auto focusing digital liquid crystal displays, flashing lights and squeaks. And although they are fine for family snaps, I find them disappointing for serious work. The trouble is that they are not designed for photographers. There you are, that's a bold statement. Although playing with these electronic toys can be fun, in my experience, the simpler the equipment, the better. As long as a camera is totally reliable, has first class lenses, produces minimum mechanical vibration, and preferably has a mirror lock, then little, then little else matters. If it is also comfortable to use and has a bit of weight to it, so much the better, as this helps to reduce camera shape, the greatest enemy of sharpness. When working in the field, I generally use Nikon F3 or FE2 cameras. The F3 is well-made instrument with a number of good points, but would be much improved by a match needle metering system instead of its digital arrangement, which I find frustrating for manual operation. Thus, I often prefer the FE2, which has a match needle for out and about work. Lenses range from 24 millimeters to 400 millimeters, and I do not own a zoom. I also possess an old Leica Flex SL, which I've had since 1967, made by Leitz and mechanical rather than electronic. It is utterly reliable with its lenses, while its lenses are second to none. Nowadays, the Leica Flex is only used for flying insects, although two of its macro lenses have been converted for Nikon use. Most of the close-ups produced in this book were taken with lights, Leitz lenses. In fact, the 100 millimeter macro Elmer is used for the majority of my photography. For two and a quarter square, a six by six square photography, I have a Hasselblad ELM with three lenses. This is employed chiefly for landscapes and for some birds and mammals. Out of the 100 pictures reproduced here, only 14 were taken on the Hasselblad, although I'm tending to use this format for an increasing proportion of my work. For 98% of the time, my camera is supported by a sturdy but versatile Benbo tripod, tripod, a gadget that seems to have been designed for the nature photographer. And the film that he used, which he talks about down here, is fascinating when you talk of high-speed ISOs and everything. The film was chosen to provide the best possible quality of, quality of image. Kodachrome 25, I started off with Kodachrome 25, or sometimes 64, was used on the 35 millimeter format and Fuji Chrome 50 on two and a quarter square format. Only two of the plates were made from the new 120 size Kodachrome. There you go. Fascinating book. Secret Visions, I think they called it Secret Lives on the Wikipedia article here, but I'm sure it's the same book, Secret Visions. And you can probably still get copies of that around the place because I did. And um, so that's a little bit about um, Stephen Doughton. I hope you found that interesting. Look him up. I'm, I haven't looked up to see if he's on YouTube. He possibly is. He's still operating, I think. And then we come to this one about the loons. And uh, this is a husband and wife team. Wait a minute. I'll get it in the right spot. Aubrey uh, Lang and Wayne Lynch. And uh, it's a beautiful book. I'll just show you some of the illustrations in it. It's not just their photography, but lots of other 
uh, people's photography as well in it. Lots of shots of loons. Which is quite a mysterious bird, and there's all sorts of mythology which she goes into. They go into in the book to explain some of the myths and and truisms about these birds. Beautiful shots of the loons. What else have we got? I'll read a little bit about them here. So stand up so I can get that in a better position. There you go. So when was this one done? This was, uh, was a little, these people are still active. Uh, as I believe Stephen Doughton is still. This is by Discovery Books. This was done in 1989. So it's one year after the other one, um, which is interesting. So lots of uh, interesting topics in there. How loons communicate, loon tunes, as against loony tunes, dancing on water, rain, rain, go away, spraying the world to death, oil damage, fly like a loon. Some interesting topics there. Courtship, nesting, egg laying, predators. So a little bit about them. I'll just see if I can zoom in. I've got to view this. Let's have a look. I'll get a bit closer so I can read it. When Dr. Lane, how, well, I should be able to zoom that in a bit. Oh, now we should be able to do it. Zoom in. Okay. So, when Dr. Wayne Lynch met Aubrey Lang, he was an emergency doctor and she was a pediatric nurse. Within five years, they were married and had left their jobs in medicine to work together as freelance science writers and wildlife photographers. For 33 years, they have explored the great wilderness areas of the world, tropical rainforests, remote islands in the Arctic and Antarctic, um, deserts, mountains, prairies and African plains. Dr. Lynch is a popular guest lecturer and an award-winning science writer. His books cover a wide range of subjects, including the biology and behavior of owls, penguins, and northern bears, Arctic boreal and grassland ecology, and the lives of prairie birds and mountain wildlife. He's a fellow of the internationally recognized Explorers Club, a select group of scientists, eminent explorers, and distinguished persons noteworthy for their contrib contributions to world knowledge and exploration. Membership is by invitation only and has included much renowned explorers as Peary, Lindbergh, Bird, Roosevelt, Stephenson and Isaac Asimov. He is also an elected fellow of the prestigious Arctic Institute of North America and he was elected in recognition of his contribution to the knowledge of polar and subpolar regions. The electing board concluded his diverse career as a natural wildlife photographer and science writer. Mr. Mrs. Lang, Ms. Lang, who shares her, her his um, wife, who loves to share her wildlife experience with children, is the author of eight, 16 books for young readers. She is also the author of Loons, a book for adults, which has been reprinted five times and sold over 50,000 copies. That's the one we're looking at. The couple's impressive photo credits include hundreds of magazine covers, thousands of calendar shots, and tens of thousands of images published worldwide. So there you go. Loons by Aubrey Lang and Wayne Lynch. Look it up, see if you can get your own copy. I think there are copies of that available on the internet. I saw some prices for some of those. You can get them at reasonable prices. And The Secret Visions by um, Stephen Doughton. There you go. So I hope you found that interesting. I'm dodging and weaving over here. <laughs> Beautiful shot of that frog there on the front, isn't it? And when you think of what I read about of the equipment that he was using and the film speeds he was using, it just goes to show you what you can do when you're really thinking about your photography and really doing it properly. Uh, whereas we just go bang, 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 bang with our digital cameras and think mu not much more of it. So I hope you found that interesting. And I'll put some links underneath um, this um, uh, video so you can look up about these guys yourselves and follow through on those books. So thanks for watching. Like if you like, subscribe if you wish. And I'll see you next time. I'll catch you later. I've got to turn this off again, don't I?